like it's hard to hear stamina. Oh, okay, I can't. Well, I'll try my best, you know, oh. to get okay, to communicate as much as as better as best as I can. Oh, I hear you now. I think I. Yeah, I just I have to put my face really next to the microphone. That's all. Um. So th there's gonna be a discussion period, uh, like, but that can happen any time during the presentation. You understand? Like, if you have a question, just blurt it out and uh, let's discuss. So I kind of crafted this after the last experience, after the last uh, meeting, when people were talking about uh, what's the mission of the group, and like that was a blocking point uh, for us. And I don't really have anything very good, but I think our goal is to grow the indie scene in Baltimore. And uh, it sounds simple, but what that means is we need to create a support structure for our developers. Um, and we need to support them no matter what, you know, because it's not about making money or not making money. It's about doing what you love to do. So this means that whatever we do as big has uh, got to be free. Like, that involves the dev nights, that involves uh, any showcases, any game jams, anything just has to be free. You know, we just have to figure out how to do this. So this, this slide goes over what we've accomplished in the past year. You know, we threw a game jam. Um, we threw our first showcase at the wind-up space, which was great. Uh, we started our lecture series. We're about to have our second one on the 21st of this month um, on source control. And the Dev Nights initiative is something that's going to start uh, next month, early next month, and March 5th. And it's most... Can you hear me? All right, all right, back to it. Uh, wait, uh, Jonathan, were you in the middle of something? Can you please uh, finish? Sorry. No, no, no. Uh, I was just going to say that while you were sorting that out, um, I did have uh, an announcement to make about showcases whenever we were done recording. Uh, we're going to be doing a show All right, um, I'll get back to it to the best of my abilities then. Uh, let's see. Sorry about this, guys. So the uh, so the next thing we're looking at doing is we set up some forums and a basic website and it's not really uh, complete or finished in any way but what we have is like it, it, it does have some costs over the long term but that's not really a big deal one thing I did forget to mention though is the dev nights what I'm hoping that this will become is Kind of like it'll spread, right? Like it's something that people organize whenever they can, with or without big, and allow for these like spontaneous co working events that happen with regularity. And uh, Dave Freeman, he was talking to um, Baltimore Node about using their space, and basically they said, uh, we, you, you guys can use our space. All you need is a member that belongs to uh, to our organization that has a key, and the membership costs fifty dollars a month, which is super accessible. Um, and it's a similar type of situation that we're going to have with Pure Bang, which is you know free usage of office space for the purposes of collaboration and independent game making. So that's why it says Dev Nights free with limitations, because we can only ho host ten people at Pure Bang, um, but there are opportunities for our members uh, to sort of, you know, find a place to hang out and just use our model and create games and help us grow the indie scene. And then uh, number six is co-working, and that's kind of like. My original idea back in the day, some of you guys know, I said, you know, let's get this, let's rent out some office space and just meet as, as often as you, we, you guys can or we can. But I think bi-monthly meetings is a really good place to start for people that 
you know, do this as a hobby. And indie game development uh, is very much a hobby for some people, you know, and that's fine. And then, you know, there are question marks, and that's kind of like, what are we going to do next, you know? And is it going to need some money? Uh, do we have to worry about insurance or being able to, you know, organize a staff? I don't know, but those are things that we got to consider and we got to discuss. So here's, here's some of the costs I put together. You know, I'm just going to kind of like go through this fairly quickly because it's not the main focus of this of tonight. Um, incorporating as an organization like whether it's a non-profit or for-profit gives us a bank account which is super useful if we want to collect any kind of money and avoid tax issues the lawyer costs right now we have a lawyer contact and if anybody here you know needs a lawyer her name is uh, Juliana Neilbauer, Neilbauer um, and she hooked us up with some legal advice regarding going to Pure Bang and hooked us up with a contract that I'm going to have people sign basically saying I'm not going to sue you know Ben Walsh and Pure Bang if I hit my face on the floor basically but you know lawyer lawyer course involves like if we want to do a nonprofit for example there's a lot of paperwork involved in applying for a nonprofit and I would need some legal assistance to do that. That's the route that people wanted to take. Um, then there's a website, website costs, event insurance, which is like if we wanted to throw anything the size of, you know, more than 100 people, you need to make sure that if people get hurt. You have like con contingency plan, you know, and that's like what the event insurance is for, super necessary. Co-working spaces, we don't really... No, we don't really have the need for that right now, but that's just, if we wanted to turn this into like a full-blown accelerator program, you know, like we would need co-working spaces. And then paying volunteers is kind of like a dream for me, you know, like I'd love to have the ability to have some money and give that money to people that deserve it and have them produce something for us. Like, for example... Brandon Sanders has been doing logos for our events, and yeah, it's really low-key, no big deal, but what if we could, you know, help out an artist to do some art for one of our developers, or have the ability to have, you know, a little bit of money to send, send someone their way if it's going to help out, and I think that's awesome. And I think the last thing in here, the financing games bullet point, it's kind of like a really interesting funding model for independent game development that the uh, Indie Fund guys set up. And you guys should check out their website. Just Google Indie Fund and you'll be able to find, you know, basically all the terms and conditions open out and you, op uh, you just open it for everybody to see. And it's basically a bunch of developers got together, pooled some money, and they fund the most promising indie games of their, you know, of their area, or or wherever they can find them, and it's it's a loan that you don't have to pay if you don't make enough money. It's just kind of like a, a forgiving loan. But if your game makes the money, like you have to pay the loan with all the money you make up to the loan amount, and then everything else is yours. You know, you get like a year to pay off the loan or whatever. Otherwise, it's completely forgiven after a certain amount of time. And that's so fascinating, dude. It's like the coolest idea ever. But it's just kind of like, you know, hey, if we had money as part of our group, what could we do with it? And this is like one potential outcome uh, if we really are smart and manage to grow and manage to do, turn this into something useful. So this comes to the point where I get to ask you guys, for your money, you know, it's kind of like, hey, I'm talking about money for this, or for our organization and doing things, so where are we going to get the money from if all of our events have to be free? Like, we are not going to charge anybody entry fees ever. We basically, we need to collect money from those that can give, and I think in order to do that, we need to give some perks and some cool, um, 
some cool like rights, you know, inside of our organization. So basically, if you donate money, you should have a say on how that money is spent within the organization. So that would mean that you guys that are here, like we would have a similar discussion only for the paid members where we get to decide where the money is spent and we get to vote. So here's the here's the plan. And this plan doesn't have like a starting point and or an ending point yet because we don't have a bank account. So I don't know how to best collect the money right now. But the idea is if you want to contribute and help out big in terms of like the money situation and pool our resources together and do cool shit with that, you would pay $10 a month membership fee if you want to. You would get voting rights and I think, I think this is fair, you would get first dibs to, event, to attend events with limited capacity. Say, we can only host 10 people at Pure Bang's uh, dev nights and that's just a reality of the situation. But we can make sure that if you pay, you're in. And that's just that simple. And it's like we can use some of the money for food if the group votes for that. Or we can use, or we can just save some of that money if the group votes for that. You know, like this is a, an organization that's always been run by the community. And that's really the way it's going to continue to work. And I just want to sort of like create a, a plan, a formula to let us do bigger and cooler things. That's it. That's my discussion or my presentation. It's time for you guys to uh, take the baton, if you will. Well, I think that's fair. Um, yeah, we're going to have to spend money. Uh, we're going to get ourselves established no matter what. It's a necessity. Um, but I, I'd be willing to pay $10 a month for sure. Um, but I, I guess that's a good starting point. What, what, is, what do you guys think? Um, I like the idea. I think the money sounds pretty, like, inclusive, generally. Um, my only thing is that, like, yeah, we don't have a way to collect that money until we have, like, a bank account, so, um, I kind of feel like we would need some sort of, like, initial thing and then collect the membership fees, because otherwise it feels like... So, let, let me just, let me just say this, um, Jonathan, like, I think right now... The membership fee is going to start as the pizza fee, okay? Like, we're not, we're not established yet, so we're not going to collect money online, period. That is just off, off limits. So we'll just, if you want to, when you come to the dev nights, hook us up with $10 or $5 every dev night, and it'll just be the pizza fee, you know? And once we get more, once we get legally established then we can we can discuss whether we want to save some of that. And I think it would be interesting if we save enough so that we can get the Baltimore Node uh, membership fee taken care of and let Dave Freeman or someone else uh, use that space as another location for the Dev Knights. You know, and just sort of create this movement where if you have access to a co-working space, give it away for free. And that's just, it's just that simple. Um, or let us use it, you know, for a fee that is accessible to us as an organization. So here's the here's the solution to that, and that's the concern I, I spoke with Dave Freeman about. And uh, really, it's a non-issue because we're always going to be be a community-driven organization because it is so crucial to me and to this group 
that we get as many people involved as possible and get as many people to take ownership of what we do because without without your efforts this group is nothing you understand like it's your willingness to participate that makes us what we what we are and makes us the potential where we can go really awesome and what that means is we're always going to do polls and we're always going to do allow our members to vote for free you know without any costs on decisions that don't aren't related to money spending you know like if you're if you're discussing what to spend money on and who to give money to i think that should be a decision between the people that give the money to the organization so it's like you buy you buy into the financial decisions of the company but not when it comes to deciding the direction as a whole deciding what next events to hold because those things have bigger repercussions than just who do we give money to you understand or can have i think so Yeah, definitely. I I think like we need to get ourselves really organized in terms of like setting up the website and making all this stuff clear and giving people a very simple and easy method to become a member and to cancel membership and to just be like because I want automatic deductions from someone's, you know, credit card or bank account or whatever because that would just be the simplest way to go. And if you want to cancel, go online and log in and cancel or whatever. Um, but to get to that point, we, we need to prove, I think, a little bit of what we can offer, you know, to the community. And I think, like, the Dev Nights is going to be a good beginning for this practice of collecting money because it will just be cash. We'll only deal in cash until we're incorporated. And that's it. That's period. But we're going to try out this system anyways. You know, yeah, I think that's a good that's a good start. Um, so, so, what do you guys think um, about our objectives, like the mission of this group? And I think I wish Dave Freeman was in this conversation because I think you would have. Um, really interesting things to say about what we should, what we should be and what we should do. But to me, this has always been an organization run by you know me and a bunch of my friends, and we all get to decide what we do as a collective, you know, and and, and join our strengths together to do something, whatever it is that we all individually are willing to put into it. And it's been really cool to see the lectures come out of this and and starting like the YouTube channel and we're, we're about to gonna have a lot of stuff to share but figuring out what to share and what's the best way to like grow is something that's challenging is gonna require a lot of time and anything just requires time you know yeah yeah that's what I was gonna say I think we're on the right track, but um, it, everything is going to take time because games take time to make. Um, so I, even if we just keep up the pace right now, like one game a month, one like uh, line of space type of game a month, and then like one uh, developer talk.
get things going as far as a nonprofit goes or something like that, it'll open up a lot of avenues for sponsorship and everything so that we don't have to fully run off our own on our own dollars forever or maybe even not that long if we can get that rolling. But we, I, I do think we need some kind of initial uh, help to get that started. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, once once we, we start to be able to show that we have numbers, you know, and that we have support, we could, we're going to be able to get money sponsorships from Unity or from some other technology that just wants your attention. And we, we might not even need... And at that point, like, the voting decisions that what we do with our money becomes, like, even more of you know like a responsibility on the people that decide to be volunteers because deciding what to do with the money is going to be i think really something that if we do it well it could make it could make or break this this uh, organization you know Well, I think uh, that's basically all I got. Um, I don't know if you guys want to continue the discussion or if uh, you just want to say a couple things before we head out. Super awesome, dude! You should you should make a you should make a post of that on the Facebook page so that it's, it stays there forever. Sweet! Thanks a bunch, dude. Honestly, uh, without Pure Bang is gonna is gonna allow us to like solidify as a, as a group I think in terms of starting to collaborate more together uh, and, and making sure that projects are moving along and, and sort of having a little bit of oversight over some, some of the less experienced people um, that, that you know are still motivated to work on games and, and want to do so and I think that's really exciting And of course, you know, I have my own project that I'm polishing up for the 27th. I'm really excited for the showcase. Um, and it's like, it's the first time I've collaborated with another programmer. And it's it's fun. It's it's going to be a lot of fun. But, you know, I can't, I can't promise anything because it's still kind of a broken mess right now. Um, but that's how game development goes. Someone will be there. Starting in three 
to six months. So it's another potential option. So if, if you guys are going to be at the meeting on um, the IGDA meeting on the 26th, um, we can talk about that. Okay. Neat. I'm, I'm sure, sure we'll we'll stay on top of that, man. You know how it is. Yeah. Do that. Oh, that reminds me. Um, I uh, see Dave's in the call, so um, uh, I am planning on being there on the 27th, hopefully. So um, I haven't signed up my game yet. Do I need to just post about that, or is there? A yeah. Form yeah. I'm, I'm out there to collect things so that we can get an overview of, of who's planning what and maybe. Hear from whoever wants to uh, bow out. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> so we can get an idea of things. So should I just like leave a post on the Facebook group or shoot you an yeah. email or what? Uh, you can make Facebook. Uh, yeah, I uh, can post in the, the group and I'll, yeah, I'll collect it. Alright, cool. I'll do that uh, later and later tomorrow then. Cool. Alright, guys, I just want to say one last thing. Um, for, for those interested in attending the uh, lecture on the 21st, I'm going to be talking about source tree, not really Git, like it's it's an overview of, of Git and Mercurial, but it's it's how to use source tree, you know, like use source tree because it's the best fucking thing in the world, and it works on Mac and Windows, no Linux, sorry, unfortunately, you got to use the command line, but if you already use source tree, then there's really no advantage, I think, to coming on the 21st, I'm just putting this out there, um... So, you know. Oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk on every every I'm gonna touch on everything, uh distributed source control, branching, uh reverting, resetting, uh merging as much as I can. As much as I I can cover. Yeah, well, I mean, we definitely, um, definitely touched on that, and I think last time we went a little bit, like, too short, I think, 90 minutes is perfectly fine, so if I, I, I think I might ramble for a bit more than an hour, but it shouldn't be too, too bad, you know? Oh, yeah, that's right, that's right. All right, no big deal. Thanks, guys, for coming. I really appreciate it. Um, and I think I'm super excited about this year. It's it's shipping up to be crazy. Um, like, I've never been so busy in my life, and it's really fun. So, let's keep it up. See you guys. Mm-hmm.